All right, everybody. Once again, my name is Thomas, and I am joined here by my colleague, Earl. Earl, do you want to say hello? Yeah. Hey, everybody. Good to be here with y'all. Yeah. Thank you all for taking your time to come, to come and join us and uh, check out what's new in this new firmware. Uh, so if you're here, hopefully you have the BrailleSense 6 or BrailleSense 6 Mini, because we're going to be talking about the latest firmware for these two devices. And before we get started, let's talk quickly about the agenda and some basic rules about how this webinar is going to go So uh, and, and what to expect. Uh, first, uh, the agenda. We're going to start off by uh, discussing uh, what's new in 1.7 and firmware version 1.7. So we're gonna talk about um, all of the new features. Uh, so we'll do a quick reading of that. Um, after that reading, we're gonna uh, go on to cloud storage. Uh, we're gonna talk about OneDrive and Dropbox and sharing features, and we're gonna discuss cloud storage in general. After that, we're gonna discuss uh, email updates, uh, in particular uh, OAuth, that's the big one. And then after that, we're going to talk about Bookshare updates. Uh, we've also added OAuth to Bookshare. Uh, after that, we're going to discuss some other additions. So we have global mute hotkeys. We've got some changes to how USB is working, changes to one-handed mode, and a few other things. So that is the agenda. And the way that this uh, webinar is going to work, if you have questions about this new firmware, we're going to hold them until the end. Uh, at the end, we're going to uh, go through all the chats, the questions and answers. You'll have a chance to, uh, to raise your hand and ask your questions. Um, so in general, this is going to take about one hour of presentation, and then we're going to have about 30 minutes of Q&A. Uh, so based off of that, let's go ahead and get started. Um, first and foremost, let's talk about what's new inside of BrailleSense, uh, this BrailleSense firmware, for firmware version 1.7. Um, in the file manager, uh, we now support OneDrive and Dropbox with similar functionality to how Google Drive works. Um, if you had Google, if you'd use Google Drive from the file manager, it's going to be very similar to that. Google Drive and OneDrive now contain subdirectories from My Drive and shared content. Both drives contained shared with me directories, and Google Drive also contains a shared drives directory for access to drives shared with you via organizational G Suite accounts. Paste cut and new folder functions are not available in shared directories in either drive. Files must be copied to the My Drive area for editing and saving back to Google Drive or OneDrive. Added to create share links items to file menus for all three cloud drives, and the hotkey for that is backspace L, and that is an excellent uh, way to share your files. We've also added an open with option in the file menu for all the cloud drives so that you can open content such as video files uh, for visual viewing using Android apps. Uh, now you also want, uh, now you also get an open with dialog uh, in cloud drives when you try to open a file that isn't directly supported uh, through one of our apps. And when you're using Braille codes other than UEB, the file name edit box is now always a computer edit box. This fixes random uh, random issues, or this fixes random places like the file download dialog where names are getting mistranslated. Uh, and it's already the case in the file manager proper. In the word processor, we added five minute option for auto saving. And we also added five minute option uh, for auto saving in the notepad. Uh, email, the big one, uh, now supports IMAP OAuth services for Gmail. So if you have Google as your account type and IMAP as the server type, you're going to be given a dialog to enter in your username and password and asked to sign into Google. Uh, added the, we also added the option for email to turn the display of field labels off. And we're going to be demonstrating that. Um, when display header label is set to off, email addresses of senders and recipients are also now not displayed, but rather just the names are visible. Um, and that is for Exchange. In the media player, we inserted mark alerts settings in the configuration dialog. Options are no message and beep. Uh, we also have an always on option in the store position, a file of longer than setting in the configuration dialog. Uh, 
Uh, we added file option to play just one file when using the repeat function in the playback settings dialog. We inserted the go to number dialog, uh, hockey for that is enter N. Inserted the go to percent dialog, hockey is backspace P. We got some uh, feedback there. Inserted the recording method in the recording settings dialog as recording in DAISY format is now supported, which is excellent. Uh, options are go. normal and DAISY. Yep. During DAISY recording, using the following hotkeys to insert nav points, you've got backspace H for heading, backspace G for page, backspace P for phrase. In the podcast, we added the ability to select multiple episodes for download when download option is set to download only. That's great. That means you can choose multiple. You don't have to do them one at a time anymore. Uh, you could use space to toggle selection as you would do with items in any file list. So simply go through the ones that you want to download, hit space, select them, and then go ahead and download them multiple uh, at one go. In the DAISY player, we have go to percent dialog, the hotkey for that's enter E. And we also have the go to time dialog, hotkey for that is backspace T. Inserted a mark alert setting in the voice settings dialog. Options are no, message and beep. And we've inserted exit without bookmark and exit and delete bookmark items in the file menu for podcasts. Moving on to Bookshare download, we have updated to the new Bookshare API that lets us do quite a few new things. So when you first log in, you're no longer going to have the traditional Braille sense login dialog, but rather you're going to be taken to Chrome login page, uh, just like you would find on the cloud drives. This is because OAuth is now used. Uh, if you do want to use anonymous mode, you can still do that. You just simply close the login dialog, and we'll demonstrate that for you today. Uh, but that means your app is limited to basic public domain literature in the catalog. Uh, also note, it does not automatically switch to computer Braille when using the username. So you're going to have to do that manually. There are now four search categories, and we're going to demonstrate this. Uh, you have the ability to access reading lists, which is great if you are a teacher or a student. Um, in the download history, it now lists your books in download order rather than alphabetically. So that means if you've downloaded a book, the one that you just downloaded, it's going to be at the top. In the search type options for the book's category, there's going to be title, author, and ISBN are separate options. We're going to demonstrate that. Um, and it's a, very similar to how other Bookshare apps handle it. And now there are two menus in this program. So if you hit space M to get to the the menus, there's going to be two now. The file menu contains sign out and options rather than placing them in the tab order. And the reading list menu allows you to create new reading lists. Um, this is separate uh, from organizational reading lists uh, that come through schools. In the address manager, we've inserted the account name field with the new address and import from CSV functions, as Android 10 requires that you specify this. In schedule manager, we added a search dialog to the menu when search appointments is focused. This allows you to set both the search mode and the range to which the search will always default until you change it again. Modes and dates are subject as before. Range is from current date or all appointments. In the wiki search, we added backspace O shortcut to open up in the web browser. Uh, otherwise, you'd have to tab through the entire set of selections uh, for the article to get to it. And we've made several global hotkey changes. Um, some of these are really great. The one I'm most excited for is F4 and the letter M, and that is a global mute. So for example, if we're in a meeting and I'm using Braille Sense 6, I don't want to find that mute button in Zoom. I could just use F4M and mute. Uh, we've also got internal speaker on off is F4A. Google search is now F1G. Wiki search is now F1I as in India. Document reader is F1O as in Oscar. Podcast is now F1P as in Papa. Database manager is now F1Q as in Quebec. For keyboard activity, we fixed a problem where computer Braille would uh, computer Braille input would toggle on and off when pressing the arrow keys or space one and space four. Uh, added a prompt when pressing backspace one two three to turn on one hand mode, you? asking to confirm if you want to use it in order. Uh, because people were hitting that on accident and turning their device into one-handed mode. Um, so support had a number of calls about that and we decided to put a prompt. System alerts, global options now allows you to choose to be alerted via beep vibration, both are off. For insert overwrite mode, the status now appears in braille as well as being spoken. 
Google Assistant by default, record and play together now bring up Google Assistant rather than voice search for the Google app. In addition, if you set another assistant like Alexa, um, sorry to all you folks that are on speaker <laughs> and have uh, such as Miss A, uh, as default assistant app in Android system settings, record and play will bring up that assistant. I apologize, there's probably a million Miss A's going off right now saying, what do you want? Um, and that is the new functions found and Braille since software version 1.7. And now we turn to the quiz portion of our, um, our program. That is a lot of stuff. In fact, we pared that list down. Um, if you want to go find the, the new changes uh, documentation, you can simply go to hymns-inc.com um, and then go to support, right? And then and there you find the the um, the link for your device, whether it's a BrailleSense 6 or a 6 mini, and you will find the the um, latest changes in the 1.7 firmware. Now, we took all of the, or rather most of the um, things that had been fixed because the, you know, the change log contains more than just the new functions, of which you've heard there are many. Um, this is a very robust, um, just feature packed, uh, firmware release, but there are also a lot of stability and bug fixes that uh, um, always come along with the, the firmware as well. So, um, and these things all exist because somebody asked about them. Uh, I just want to kind of backtrack a little bit here, Thomas, and talk about uh, the reasons for a couple of the features, like the one that um, uh, starts the open with dialogue. So one of our power users uh, earlier on this week identified the fact that he could not play MOV movies. So those are movies, am I right, Thomas, that are actually generated when you record on the iOS devices, correct? Yeah, correct. That's the yeah. default file type for recording video from iOS. Yeah. So if you if you do the um, you, if you browse to one of these files with a .mov extension and you press enter on it now, it's going to bring you up into a um, uh, open with dialogue. In the case of MOV, I discovered that if you down, you go down to the default photos app, so it's just called photos in that list, and press enter, it will play your uh, MOV files. And I'm not sure, but I, mean, I think a little birdie might have told me that, that that might be something that could be supported in yet a, a, another release down the road. So I you didn't hear that here. But, or maybe you did and now I'm in trouble. No, no, but, but it's all totally doable. Um, the other reason, the other thing I wanted to um, shed some light on, some people might be asking, well, so why do we now have an autosave in five minutes uh, function in, in both the notepad and the word processor? And the reason for that is that we discovered that sometimes because the default uh, sleep mode kick in is set to 10 minutes, so was the, the uh, default um, uh, uh, autosave function was set for 10 minutes. And sometimes it would go into sleep mode before it had a chance to autosave. And then when it woke up again, it was not quite, um, and you, you might may or may not have lost some of the work that you had done. So if you're concerned about this, I would definitely go into, and it'll, it'll now uh, save every five minutes or so. Excellent. I think, let's see. I think for me, my favorite uh, addition is the uh, the global mute hotkey. <laughs> you said that. That is that is a good one. And that came from uh, one of our beta testers. Um, yeah, so he had a bunch of students in class and he was trying to teach a lot of these different students like, okay, how do you, how do you mute yourself, right? Because they were doing Zoom, uh, classes virtual. It's like, how do we get get our kids to to all mute? And so some kids picked it up, were able to find the mute button in Zoom somewhere. I said, man, I wish there was just like one way that we could do it real easy. And, yeah, regardless uh, of the, the 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 platform that you're using, if, um, Meet, you know, or um, what what are the uh, uh, Teams, Meet, Zoom, team, yep, yeah, exactly. all of them it just works with all of them. It's great. Yep, absolutely. Most frequently used keystroke for sure. <laughs> <laughs> All right, so we're a little ahead of schedule, but I think that's going to be just fine. So up next, Earl, do you want to start uh, going through 
yeah. cloud storage. Yeah. Sorry about the the extraneous noise earlier. Apparently, my the mixer I'm using is not only looping back the sound of my my Braille sense, but it's also looping back my uh, my computer audio, even though I've got the checkbox set to off to not share my audio on my computer. So why don't I do this? Um, eh, I'll just I'll just leave it alone for now. Um, am I sharing my screen with you right now? Yep. Thomas. Okay. All right. So um, w one of the items, that, and it's one of the biggies, is the uh, the new support for um, cloud drive services such as Google Drive, Dropbox, and OneDrive. Um, Final manager. Yeah. So I I've just pressed F one to go into uh, the, the main menu, and right off the file manager, um, I can go in here just by pressing Enter. Flash list one five list item. And see that I've got five five items in my list of drives. Now, if I had a USB hub connected and I had multiple external storage devices connected to that, you'd see those here as well. So we're very mindful that for years now, people have been able to um, synchronize data between their, you know, their Dropbox and their OneDrive, and you had to use something like OneSync or Google Sync, whatever the sync was, but the brilliant folks over there um, at uh, in Korea, uh, the uh, developers had decided to just go ahead and do a HIMS app that, that gave you really quick streamlined access to the same thing right from within the file manager. So I'm just gonna go ahead and I call it down arrow, but it's basically you know, space dot four. I see so, everyone cold and turn up the rails speech volume. Okay, I mean <laughs> everybody heard that? Yes I can. Let me let me just see. Um, I've got the Braille sense already. The only problem with that is there is some um, digital noise. How is Google Drive how is that? Is that more better? Um, to everyone, cold, much better. Okay, thank you, Ryan. That's great. Um, so we, we got Google Drive, and in, we've had Google Drive support for the Polaris, right, and the uh, predecessor to the six. But if we go in there now, we'll see that we My drive folder one three list item. now have um, three options in here. And had I not uh, signed into this drive already today, um, rather at some point, because once you sign in, you're signed in, you shouldn't have to do it again until you update. Um, I would have been prompted for um, signing in using my, you know, my account. All I have to generally do is go tab to my email address, press enter, and then, in, um, and then it asks me if I want to allow this, you know, access from this app. And of course, I, I press A for allow. So um, first letter navigation, of course, is supported throughout the entire system. Now we've got um, my drive folder one three list item. My drive, instead of just going directly into the drive itself, like we'd have on the Polaris and the earliest iteration of the Brailleson six firmware, we've got shared drives folder two three shared list item. drives. And as Thomas read earlier, um, this is for uh, uh, organizational accounts, um, folks uh, that have a G Suite enterprise account and the administrator can in here assign folders to be shared between a specific groups of people so unless you have a g suite account you really don't have to worry about that um i'm gonna go down one more shared with me folder three three list item and this is where the all the things that have been shared with me so they have been kind of separated out from the things that i've put in my google drive and the things that others have shared with me in here. So that's really a nice way of recognizing because, you know, sometimes I <laughs> I don't know, did I create this file or this folder? Um, so now I can just come to the shared with me folder and uh, and see what items have been shared with me. I want to go ahead and go back up to the top. My here, drive folder one three list item. And I'm going to back out one level at a time just by pressing back. Google Drive three five list. Item. Back to my list of drives. Now, if I go into one drive four five list item, one drive. I can go in here and see that my drive folder one two list item. I have the same thing, my drive folder. Shared with me folder two two list item. Shared with me, but I don't have a um, shared drives option in here like I do with Google Drive and um, a Google Suite account. But still, I can separate out the items that people have shared with me uh, from the items that have been um, that, that I've uploaded. And what's beautiful about this, folks, I mean, this 
ability to to just access all literally all the the files on my in my OneDrive account from anywhere, and I don't have a I don't have to have them on my local machine. I just have to have an internet connection, and then I can go in. So I'm out and about. I'm at uh, say the the uh, um, the local computer warehouse where I always get into a lot of trouble. Um, and they say, well, let's see, how would you like to pay for this? And it's like, oh, shoot, I want to use this other card. Or maybe I have a member number that they want to reference uh, or whatever the case is. Any information that I have in OneDrive, which, by the way, is all of it in my case, because I've got an Office 365 account, I have access to without having it, having to have it to carry it around on the local machine. So I'm going to go ahead and um, press enter on here. March 2021 reports folder one to list item. And I've got these MMX files folder two different to list things. MMX files folder two to that have been item. shared with me. Um, yeah, maybe that was a bad decision. Let me go out one level. Shared here. with me folder two to list item. And I'm gonna go back up to my drive folder one to list item. The things I have created and put in the, the uh, OneDrive folder. Attachments folder one thirteen list item. So no longer do I need to drop things into one sync folder and then have them synchronized with my, my, my Braille sense because you know Hims has done it for me. I've got uh, access to it. Here, I'm going to just go ahead and press uh, MMX files folder five, MP3 backing tracks folder 613. MP3 list item. backing tracks. Uh, yeah, I can go in here. 11, take the money and run. 1.mp3150 <laughs> list. And, and there's a uh, uh, backing track. Quarters, I don't use, I don't drive. Um, okay, so I'm going to, yeah, so we're, I'm going to actually see if I can get my computer to stop echoing everybody's stuff here with the. Uh, did you? Sharing is paused. Oh. Sharing is resumed. H six hundred thirty two B. Okay, so interesting note. You know, you can't you can't uh, put Jaws in in a um, it's kind of a standby mode when you're sharing your screen because it, it doesn't work. The keystroke <laughs> insert space and then S to to put it in that mode doesn't work. So I'm going to ask people to refrain from using the chat while I am um, presenting because it's just going to uh, come across to everybody's computer it's always something isn't it anyways um so the other thing i wanted to show you i'm not gonna if i press enter on this file or if i uh, on any other um file like an excel spreadsheet you know of course depending on the, the the file extension it's just going to play it using the default player in this case it would bring up my hymns media player um or if it's an excel spreadsheet obviously it'll bring up the excel viewer or the powerpoint um viewer whatever the case may be. But let's say that I want to share this with you. Um, I want to share the, the, the link in here with somebody and I can just right here, press backspace L. Link HTTPS, and one VMS USAIO 5632 IIRVY HDM6 5 QPA static park. Blah, blah. It, it creates the, uh, um, the OneDrive link and I can come over here just by tabbing. Copy link, enter C button. Press enter to tab, to copy, to copy it. It's already complete. Launch my email app with the hotkey that launches email, which is uh, uh, um, F1E. Task name, email. Personal two, three list, getting and, new message list. And it's bringing up my personal account here. Unread here is your free guide, six ways to maximize the value of your music catalog. Song Twitter uh, Friday, June 17. Okay, and so I, I'll start a, a message to write a message. Two, and edit box. E. I'll send it to, let's send it to E-A-R-L-E at hymns dash inc.com right Earl Um did that work? Yeah. E-A-R-L-E and hymns. Yeah. Okay. And I'm just gonna say CC edit box BCC um, subject edit box. That link you requested. That, that. link link you you requested. Q U E S T E D. Brilliantly, I'm I'm typing in contracted braille. Message body, multi-line edit box. And of course, the recipient is going to get lovely plain text because nobody does braille translation better than him. So I, I just got to say. Now I'm going to just press Enter V. Paste blank to paste and rather five Q P A. There's my five thousand six hundred thirty two I R Y H D six It is a big link, and um, in order to launch this link when I receive it. All I have to do is make sure that my um, uh, my, my my cursor. I just press the routing button above the first letter in the link, and then press uh, 
backspace L to launch it in the default player, which of course in this case is the, the Hymns Media player. So I've got that link in here. I'm sending it to myself. Send it. Enter S for send. And um, I think my connection is a little bit on the slow side today, but I see the, the full cells dancing across from left to right on the Braille display. And successfully sent new message. I hear now Unread here is your free guide. we're successfully sent. Okay, so that's how you can share a link directly from your OneDrive. Uh, the same exact thing works in Dropbox as well as Google Drive. I'm gonna go back to my file, file manager. manager. F, copy link, enter C, button. Um, I'm gonna bail out of this, F4. Cancel, 11, take the money and run. 1.mp3, um, 150 list item. And I'm gonna just kind of go to the top here, backspace 11, take the money out. And run. MP3 backing tracks folder, um, my drive folder one, two list item. My drive. One drive, four, five list item. And let's go down finally to Dropbox, five, five list. Dropbox. Item. Albany folder one, 13 list item. And there is my um, Blues Alter Ego, uh, Albany Taylor. He never does anything right, but he's, it's got, it's my kind of my parody album. Classic literature they folder two, 13 there, list and item. And I've got the uh, Gutenberg's project, classic literature in here, and I can. Uh, as you see, I, I went directly into Dropbox, so there is no file shared with me option in here. Um, and of course, and there, I don't know that there's, is, there uh, is, I don't think that we've done the shared drives as well in Dropbox. So anyways, that's, that's everything I have to say about this. Again, say Thomas sends me a spreadsheet. Uh, or he simply shares it with a, a link with me. What's just so brilliant is the ability to, to just open it up uh, and do whatever I want to do. If I have something I want to share with somebody else, I, I don't have to jump onto my computer and go find it and then mess around with, um, you know, going into Drive within Chrome and then doing the upload thing. I just go to my file manager on my Braille Sense, and I can tell you that it has just really help to streamline my my workflow so that's everything i have to say about the um the shared uh, uh, the cloud services excellent earl thank you very much yeah all right and up next we're going to talk about some email updates so i'm going to go ahead and share my screen i'm going to i'm going to comment on myself share. if i can read share has been stopped zoom Start button. Zoom webinar. You are viewing Thomas's <laughs> The shared content is hit there. All right. I think we should be good to go here. Let's just double check. Yep, we're good to go. All right. So I'm going to talk a little bit about the uh, the updates to email. Um, I have a feeling a number of you have already checked this out, but I'm going to take this from a perspective of somebody who has not uh, updated their email uh, to OAuth. Uh, so we're going to talk a little bit about, first of all, uh, OAuth versus POP versus IMAP. Uh, so I'm going to explain that a little bit, and then we're going to go into a, a little bit about um, some of the protocols when you're using IMAP, what you need to have, and then we're going to set up a new OAuth account. And we're also going to talk about the display headers, which is a, a fantastic addition uh, that we've added to the email. So first, uh, a lot of people started off um, using POP email uh, protocols. Now, one thing about POP is, and this is according to Google, um, Google says POP accounts are meant to be used on a single device. Emails are not synced in real time, but instead they are downloaded to a device and you decide how often you want to download these new emails. If you're using a POP account, you're going to have to have two-factor authentication and you're going to need to create an app-specific password in order to use that on the Braille Sense 6. Now, um, a lot of people started off using POP because that was one of the first protocols out there. If you are somebody who is using POP, I highly recommend that you switch over to something like IMAP with OAuth. If you check on Google's documentation about POP, one of the first things that they say is to make sure that POP email is right for you. They're giving you a nudge, a little bit of a warning um, that that may not be the ideal email protocol for you. Because let's say 
you're working on the Braille Sense 6, you download some of your emails, and then you go home, you want to read some emails from your iPhone, um, those emails are not going to be on your iPhone because with POP protocol, you've downloaded them to your Braille Sense 6. They are off of the email server and cannot be served up to your second device. That's where IMAP comes in. IMAP is an email protocol that stores your emails on a server and then delivers them to every device with your account. So for example, let's say you get an email. Once that email is read, or let's say you move it or you delete it, or let's say you send a new email or reply to an email, all of this activity that you've done on your device, on your Braille Sense 6, is synced up with the server and then those changes are reflected on your other devices. So think of IMAP as a way to sync all of your devices so that they're in the same state, the same emails. Uh, if you re if an email is marked as red on the Braille Sense 6, it's gonna be marked as red on your iPhone. If you uh, delete an email off of your iPhone, when you open it up on your Braille Sense 6, it's gonna be deleted off of there as well. All of that is the, the joy and the, the engineering wonder of IMAP. So IMAP is great to sync all of your emails between multiple devices from a uh, email server somewhere. Now, let's say you are using IMAP uh, and you're going to be setting up on the Braille Sense 6. You have two different options. One uh, that other people have been using is to use an app-specific password. Now, if you're using an app-specific password, it does require that you have two-step verification turned on. Now, the process to create that app uh, password and have two-step verification is not, uh, it's not a monumental task. Um, one thing that I do not like about that approach, um, I do like the ability to have one tap sign-ins uh, for my Google accounts. So what that means is, let's say I wanted to log into something I will get a notification on my iPhone that says, uh, are you trying to sign in to this application on this device? And I just click yes, and then it allows access. So that's uh, Google OneTap, part of their credential services. Um, you cannot use that uh, for your email application if you have, uh, you cannot use that and have two-step verification turned on at the same time. So that's a big drawback. And that's when we get to OAuth. OAuth is really great because it improves security for your email program. Uh, the way that it works is when you uh, create an account on your Braille Sense 6, you're logging in uh, to an OAuth page, a Google page, and you're basically saying, hey, Google, the Braille Sense 6 uh, has authorization to work with Gmail so that you can communicate and sync up. And that's really where OAuth comes in. Uh, so the developers never get your email, developers never get your password. Um, it only goes to Google and it's tokenized. So it's incredibly secure and safe. And that's really where OAuth comes in, uh, in mainstream. And for the Braille Sense 6, it's really nice because the login and account creation is streamlined. It's much simpler to do than doing two-step verification with an app-specific password. Now, because this is something new, I am gonna go ahead and create an account. So I'm starting here at the main menu. File manager, F. And I'm gonna go ahead and open up email by pressing E. You must create at least one mail account from the accounts manager in the tools menu. Accounts manager dialog, account name, no list list item. What you'll notice is I've got a notification that says I have to create at least one account. Um, and that's going to be common if you have no accounts on your email, uh, inside of your email application. Um, you're going to get that notification and then immediately the accounts manager dialog is going to pop up. From here, I'm going to go to add by pressing F3 twice. Information, enter I, dialog button. One more time. Add, enter A, dialog button. And I'm going to press enter here. Additionally, you could use the hotkey enter A. Default mail server, pop three radio button. Now, uh, just like I mentioned before, when you're setting up an email account, you could choose pop three, IMAP, and we also have exchange in here. Um, that's going to be a topic for, for later, um, but I'm going to press space because it's a radio button. So I know space is going to toggle through my options. IMAP radio button. All right. And I have IMAP set. When you're using OAuth, you want it set to IMAP. Now I'm going to move to my server type by pressing F3. 
server type manual one for list item by default it's set to manual and I it says list item one of four list items so I know I'm going to press space with dot four to move to the next item Google two for list item and Google is set to server type and that's exactly what I want uh, from here I'm going to go ahead and press f3 to get to account name account name Google edit box the account name is simply um, a label. This is something that's going to help you identify this email account from other email accounts that you might have on your device. So, for example, um, I could call this one sample. Dot six. S A M P Q Q R R L E. So I've got sample here. Um, you can type in personal, or you could type in work, or you could type in uh, you know whatever you want. It's just a label. Uh, for your information only. Next, I'm going to press F3. Display name, edit box. Display name is the information that a person uh, gets when they receive an email from you. So here, I'm just going to go ahead and type Thomas. Dot six, T-H-O-M-A-S. So now when I send an email from this email account, uh, let's say I send Earl an email, he's going to get that email and it's going to say from Thomas because that's the display name. I'm going to press F3. Email address, edit box. Uh, this is very uh, self-explanatory. So you just type in your email address here. H-I-M-S-P-O-L-R-I-S dot A-G-M-A-I-L lower D C-O-M. So I typed in my email address. Uh, for those of you that are going to be using UEB, um, dot four, then dot one for the at sign, uh, or you could do uh, backspace space dot four if you're using computer braille. So I go ahead and type that in there. I know that the next is going to be the login username. I'm actually going to just go ahead and copy this. I'm going to press enter A to select all. Select all. Enter C to copy. Copy complete. All right. I'm going to press F3 to move on to the next field. Log on username. Edit box. Log on username because it's uh, Google. It's Gmail. Um, it's just plain Gmail account. It's the same. So I'm just going to paste this with enter V. Paste. I'm going to press F3 and it's going to take me to a sign in with Google button. Sign in with Google button. And I'm going to press enter here. When I press enter here, it's going to open up a uh, Chrome page uh, that has the OAuth sign in area. Checking account. 50 web use sign in to continue to Braille sense email. Now, if I were to navigate around this page, I would find a lot of information. Um, but by default, it puts me into the email field. I'm going to press enter. And uh, I could go ahead and type in my email address, paste. or I just paste it uh, because I already had it copied. Um, so I pasted it and I read it on my Braille display. It says himspolaris at gmail.com. That's the right email address. I'm going to press F3. Button forgot email. Press enter to activate. I could press F3 until I get to the next button. I could also use first letter navigation. I'm going to press the letter N. Button next, press enter to activate. And that's what I want. I'm going to go ahead and press enter here. Hi sample, edit box, enter your password. All right, and now I'm gonna go ahead and enter in my password. So it says enter box, enter in your password. I need to press enter to activate the edit box. And I'm going to go ahead and uh, mute my speech real quick. Voice off. And I'm gonna hide this real quick. I'll just go ahead and type it in here. So I've typed in my password. I'm gonna turn speech back on. Voice on. Before using this app, button privacy press policy. Press F3 until I get to next. In terms of service, button next, press enter to activate. Press enter. 6080, web braille sensing, save password, option available near top of the screen. Okay, so on the next page, um, this is a standard Google page that's saying braille sense email wants access to your Google account. It tells you all of the information that's going to be shared uh, across Google or Gmail and our application. You can go ahead and read this. You can also press the letter A to get to the very bottom. Button allow, press enter to activate. And I do want to allow it. I'm going to go ahead and press enter. Successfully added account. Account name, sample one, one list item. Okay, so I have successfully added that account. From here, I could go ahead and close this. I could do space E or F4. Account name, sample one, one list item. All right, so I've got my account name here. Now I could get to my mailbox by pressing F3. Receiving mailboxes. Mailbox, inbox one seven list item. I've got my inbox one of seven list items, so I can navigate through my mailbox uh, items using space one or space four. I'm going to press F3 again. Getting new message list. 
Unread from Google no reply accounts, google.com subject, security alert 1414 list item. Okay. Now, uh, if you haven't gone through and set up uh, display headers, the way that my information is going to be presented is going to be a little bit different from the way your information is presented. I'm going to go ahead and uh, delete this. I'm going to do space D. Delete message. Yes, prompt button. Press enter for yes. Deleting messages. Mail deleted successfully. Right. Unread from the download from MIT Technology Review Newsletters, technologyreview.com subject. In okay, so on this new email, it says unread from, and it gives me uh, who it's from. So it's MIT Technology Review, and then the subject, all right? And the way that I got this information is really great. This is the display headers. So I could get into this information through the uh, menus. I'm gonna press space M, or I could press F2. File, F, pull down menu. All right, and now I'm gonna to wanna to go to um, uh, the tools section. I can press T. Accounts manager, M, dialog just, enter M menu item. I can scroll down to set options or I could press O. Set, set spam oh. settings, set options, O, dialog enter O menu item. All right, set options, the hotkey is enter O. So I could just press enter O from inside of the, the email if I wanted to. I'm gonna press enter here. Default mail server, sample list item. All right, and I've got a number of items here. Uh, default mail server is set to sample list item. List item means I could scroll. Use this default sent from account, sample list item. All right, this is all fine. I'm going to go ahead and quickly move through some of these. So uh, number of messages to receive. Number of messages to receive, 32 list item. I could press space to address this. 64 list item, 96 list item, 128 list item, 1000 list item, all list item, 32 list item. I'm going to keep it at 32. I'm going to scroll down space four. Exchange message list type, detailed list item. Um, exchange message list type, this is something new. This is gonna uh, change how much information is in the header when you have an exchange email account. Uh, the less header information, the quicker the email uh, is sent and received. Uh, next is display header labels. Display header labels, yes list item. Got it to set to yes. And I'm gonna scroll down to first mail header. First mail header from list item. All right, and it says from. So the very first thing that I read when I get an email is who it's from. If I press space, date list item. I could change date to list item. To uh, obviously, I know it's to me. Subject list item. Subject from list item. From. All right, I want it set to from. The next thing I want set. Second mail header. Subject list item. Subject. That sounds great. I'm going to get down to the third. Third mail header. Off list item. It's set to off. Let's say I want to change this. Date list item. I want to add the date. Okay, I'm going to scroll down. Fourth mail header. Off Fourth list mail item. header. I want to leave it there. So I'm going to press enter to confirm. Successfully saved. Unread from the download from MIT Technology Review Newsletters, technologyreview.com subject. Inside the experimental world of animal infrastructure day, Friday, June 17th, 2022, right. 01. Six and now the date is added to the end of that uh, header information. And I so I can rearrange it. I could turn some stuff on. I could turn some stuff off. And that is a really great way uh, to be able to understand what emails are coming in and out of your emails. So we're running a little bit behind. And so I'm gonna go ahead and quickly move on to Bookshare updates. Um, Earl, I heard you unmute yourself if you have anything you wanna add. That yeah, was totally by accident. Sorry about that. Oh, okay. Exiting email. Email, E. All right, so that's email. Um, and so I'm gonna go ahead and go through this just a little bit quicker than I normally would. So I'm back at the main menu. File manager, F. Okay, I've got no apps open. All right, next thing we're gonna talk about is Bookshare updates. And so we have added the OAuth login to Bookshare. Um, Bookshare is gonna be found under uh, books. So I'm gonna press K. Daisy player, D. And I'm gonna to go to Bookshare download by pressing the letter B. Webview, so edit box email or username. This field is required, enter your Bookshare username. Okay, so from here, I'm gonna go ahead, if I, uh, if I press space one, two, this field is required, this field, email or username. Email or username. I'm going to press space four, five or F3. This field, edit box, email or username. I can this type field in, is required, enter your book. I could type in my edit box. If I press F3 again. Enter your bookshare username. Password. This field is required, this field is required. Edit box, password, this field is right. required. Press enter. And that's enter where text. I would put in my password. Um, for this part of the, uh, the webinar, I'm going to go ahead and mute myself and stop sharing my screen real quick so I don't share all this information. Give me just one second. All right, uh, so I'm back after I had uh, entered in the uh, the uh, uh, credentials. Um, it takes me right inside of the Bookshare app. Um, can somebody let me know if they can hear me now? 
Lo that one. Loud and clear. Okay, excellent. Excellent. Sorry about being just missing there. All right. Uh, so I entered in the uh, the credentials and I'm going to go ahead and open up Bookshare app. Books one for search content. Books one for list item. All right. In the search content, uh, we have uh, the search content options have changed from uh, the previous release. So books is going to be normal. Periodicals two for list item. Periodicals is the same. The next one. Reading list three for list item. Reading list is something new. So if you're a teacher or a student that is working with a reading list, um, this is where those books are going to show up. Uh, so now students and teachers should have access to these reading list books uh, directly on the Braille Sense 6. In addition, you can create your own private reading lists to help organize your books. And pressing space with that four moves me to the next item. Download history for four list item. The great thing about download history is that we have changed how the results are shown. I'm going to press F3 to get to results. It's going to take just a second. The structure of magic 150 list item. All right, the structure of magic. So prior to this update, it used to be in alphabetical order, but now we've changed it so that the results are shown in chronological order meaning the structure of magic is the last book that I downloaded, which makes it really nice. Um, so instead of having to go ahead and go through everything and find that last book you downloaded, it's right there. If I uh, go to the next item, space four. The 48 laws of power 250 list item. That's the second to last book that I have downloaded. So I'm gonna uh, go back up to search content with space one, two. Search content, download history for four list item. All right, I'm going to go back up with space.4. Reading list three, four periodicals, two books, one, four list item. Inside of the search content, we've made changes to the search type. So I'm set to search content books. I'll press F3. Search type, title one, five list item. All right, before it used to be word, category, and full text, but now we have title. Author two, five list item. Author. ISBN three, five list item. ISBN. Keyword four, five list item. Keyword. Category five, five list item. And finally, category. So this is going to give you a little bit better granularity on how to search uh, through these books. Um, the other thing that I wanted to talk about real quick, since we're pressing up on time, is this reading list, uh, talking about the private reading list. I'm going to go ahead and press space with the letter M or F2 to open up the menus. File, F, pull down menu. Um, inside of this file menu, uh, if I press enter here, I'm going to be given three options, including the option to sign out. Options, O, dialog enter, sign out, X, menu exit, Z, space C, menu item. All right, I'm going to press space E. File, F, pull down menu. I'm going to go to, down to the next option, which is new, reading list, pull down. Reading list, R, pull down menu. I'll go ahead and press enter here. Create reading list, C, dialog enter, R, menu item. From here, I can create a reading list. I can edit a reading list, I can add a title to a reading list, or I could delete. So if I wanted to create a reading list, I simply press enter here and then choose a name. And create reading list dialog. Name, edit box. All right. Uh, and I believe T -T this is in computer braille by default. So I'm just going to name it test. If I press F3, I could choose description. Description, edit box. If I press F3, I could choose access. Access, private list item. I could press space to change between the options. Shared list item, org list item, private list item. I'm gonna go ahead and keep it as private. I'm gonna press enter here. Search type, category success to create reading list. Search type, category five, five list item. Now I have a test reading list. I'm gonna go back up to my search content. I'm gonna press space dots one, two. Search content, books one, four list item. I'm gonna go down to my downloaded books by pressing space with dot four. Periodicals, reading list, download history for four list item. Download history, I'm gonna press F3. The structure of magic 150 list item. Now let's say I wanted to add this to my uh, reading list. Uh, I could press enter with the letter A or you could do it through the menus. Add title to reading list dialog. Reading list, test one, two list item. Webinar two, two list item. So I've got two reading lists here, one I created earlier. I'm gonna add this to my test webinar. I can get to it by pressing, uh, navigate this list with space one, space four. Test one, two list item. Press enter. Results, the structure, successfully added reading list. Results, the structure of the 48 laws of power 250 list item. I could add this one as well, enter A as well. Um, I've gone a bit past my time, so I'm gonna go ahead and cut it off there. And that means up next, uh, we're gonna have Earl talking about some of the other features that have been added in this firmware version. Bookshare download, B.
Okay. New button. And Alt plus Q button. Let me just go ahead and move to the uh, new button. Meeting info. Resume. Stop mute. Currently unmuted. Stop resume recording. Left parallel. Stop mute. Cur audio settings button menu. Start my video settings. Close. Open. More options. Question. Full button. Open chat panel. Alt. More options. Share screen. Alt plus S button. Uh, no alerts available. For some reason, the S wasn't getting me there, so I. Uh, Select the window or an application that you want to share. Sharing options list box. Use arrow keys to select content to sh share. Sound checkbox not checked. No alerts available. Let's see. Sharing options list box. Use arrow keys to select content to share. H632B. There we go. You have started screen share. I'll share left there. Okay. So. so now see your <laughs> I'm going to go ahead and turn up my volume. I've got some little, little bit of digital noise happening here that since um, some electrical work was done in my little studio here. So sorry if there's some extraneous noise, but. Um, you know, I don't have a lot to add to everything. I thought that um, everything that Thomas just showed was outstanding. I mean, this is all um, a function of the, the new firmware 1.7. Um, and, you know, it's just getting better. But one of the things that, that I'm reminded of uh, as I go to, to talk about some of the new keystrokes that have been added is that... Um, First of all, could you confirm that you hear me okay? So I'd, I can confirm that I'm not talking to myself at this point, Thomas. Um, yeah, you're good. All right, good. Um, is, is a story where somebody, I'm, I'm in a, uh, invited to do a BrailleSense demo, a BrailleSense 6 demo to a consumer by a technician. I'm in uh, a different state. I'm actually based out of Minnesota here now. But they during the demonstration, I thought it was odd that this person said, well, I can do that on my phone. Uh, you know, first of all, you invited me here and I don't know why that's relevant to what I'm showing the person, but uh, actually, no, you can't. He goes, oh yeah, I can. I can, I, I can do that on my phone. And it's just like, you know what? We, we, can, we can test that because I guarantee that with my Braille Sense 6 in terms of pure efficiency and functionality you cannot beat me okay do this on your phone start a quick start a note and start typing in your notes Task name, notepad. i'm in my Top notepad document. right now go to your email account Task name, email. i'm in my theory. email six ways to maximize the value i haven't been in my, my on friday june 17 oh, 2022 talking 20 email um i haven't done this yet since i've been in here but um i'll, I'll just go ahead and do do uh, launch my web browser Task name, web browser. So, Starting web browser. <laughs> there's not going to be a test. W -W -W. I was joking about Dr. earlier there, but the more of these types of keystrokes that you remember, um, I, I can guarantee you this guy was still floundering around, flicking around on his screen. Um, still flicking around on the screen by the time I was finished, mm -hmm. that would do it right in my note and doing the next thing. So, it really speaks a lot to efficiency. Um, you know, Braille display with a phone is a great solution. Um, and, but, but, you know, in, in certain settings, like say you're in a meeting, you want to turn off speech, backspace F2, voice off. boom, this voice is off. And now I can do com everything completely in silence um, and, you know, take my notes and things like that. Voice on, Hymns International. Um, some of the new keystrokes that have come into play uh, have been the... Um, uh, the Google search is still, I know this uh, alt control in the letter G, that can still be used, but they've switched it. They've actually also added um, F1 with G. Name, Google search. And now search I'm in a, a, box. a Google search. So let's say that I want to look for um, the term Braille sense. Braille sense. Um, what? Um, firmware or 1.7, 1 1.7 1 firmware. One period, seven. W -E, enter on that. And so what I see, let's see here, real sense firmware. Searching. I, did, I didn't press the enter key. <laughs> Download center, him support 113 list item. So I'm brought immediately to the download center where I can find all the information. Latest BrailleSense um, 6 firmware hymns incorporated 213 list item. BrailleSense users Facebook 313 list item. BrailleSense 6 user download hymns incorporated 213 list item. Here again is another huge boom in functionality because now I've got a strictly text-based Google search um, dialogue here 
totally doing away with the need to have to put up with um, scrolling banners or advertising, anything like that. It just takes me straight to my, my results. Okay, so F1G is the keystroke to get into uh, Google search. Uh, F1P. Creating feed list. Brings feed us to our creation. podcast. So feed. if you are Sensecast 2340 podcasters, list. boom, you're already there. F1P um, is there. And if I uh, want I, to go to, let's say, Nightly News with Lester Holt, I'll just press the letter N because NBC Nightly News with Lester Holt 1342 list items. Still, uh, first letter navigation is brilliantly um, supported throughout the entire system. You know, so I'll press enter on Updated that. Feed. Episode it's Thursday, June 16th, Updated 2020, feed. not downloaded, 160 list item. Start content download, zero. And let's see how fast it, it downloads here. 5, 10, 15, 20, 25, 30, 50, content download complete, play. Time. should zero, automatically zero, start. Zero, zero, Tonight, the zero, stunning zero, new zero, evidence zero, from the January 6th committee on Donald Trump's Saving efforts to pressure his... Okay. So you get the point. Um, the, the other thing, there, there are many, many keystrokes, many, many uh, um, new keystrokes that I'm not going to go through them all because, you know, it's just there's a lot of them that we've added here. And what's really important is that you can go into the help documentation just off of the main menu. And, and go to your command summary and go to the different sections that you're interested in learn about all these keystrokes. And of course, wherever you are, um, the, the menu systems are somewhat contextual in nature all by themselves. So you can go into the menu system and see a lot of the hotkeys that exist, but uh, as well as press space H to get into actual context um, sensitive help. So the other thing that I, I think that is really important is that we have actually added a function and we introduced it in the last web uh, webinar uh, with, with re respect to uh, computer keyboard input. And you can plug in any USB keyboard into the Braille Sense and QWERTY um, is supported brilliantly, but for our folks who are uh, consumers who are deaf and blind, um, we've actually made it possible to be a kind of a face-to-face -face communications device because on the Braille Sense 6, that is the 32 cell version, um, we've got an LCD display that can be flipped. So the orientation can be flipped. So the person sitting across the table can see what's coming up uh, on the Braille display and the person uh, who's deaf, blind and maybe not verbal can see what's coming up on the Braille display. There was a problem uh, with uh, the arrow keys and dots four and dot one uh, actually turning on uh, computer input mode by mistake, by accident, that has been resolved. So now when the person, the sighted hearing person starts typing on the QWERTY keyboard, it is going to automatically put it into computer input mode. And then when the person uh, the deaf blind person who is typing on the braille keyboard starts typing, it's going to take it out of computer uh, uh, input mode. But so both, so the, the person who's reading the braille is seeing the, the, their grade of choice. So the, it's going to honor um, uh, UEB contracted braille if that's what it's set for. And of course the person, uh, the sighted person sitting across using the QWERTY keyboard is going to see uh, just, you know, of course, regular text on the screen. One of the other um, features that we have is a one-handed mode. This is for folks that only have obviously use of one hand for whatever reason. And um, this keystroke was <laughs> inadvertently being activated without um, folks knowing about it. Now, sudden, it was just too easy to press the keystroke, which is dots one, two, three, and seven. So, all the keys on the left side of the Braille keyboard, when you press it, it turns on one handed mode. Hymns International. Accidentally. And, um, oh, it didn't do it. Final manager. Let me do it, do it again. Do you want to use one hand mode? Press enter to confirm. And now, instead of button. getting uh, stuck into the sand trap that both of those, those of us who require the use of both hands 
<laughs> um, and, and don't know anything about, maybe we don't even know about one-handed mode because we don't use it, um, you're, it that, that can avert a call to our technical support staff because, hey, it's not doing anything that I want it to do anymore because it's in one-handed mode. So now you're going to be asked if you want to be in one-handed no mode. And I'm going to say, ah, no, I'd be... Um, Final manager. I would be lost in one-handed mode. I know people using one-handed mode who type faster than me. It's, <laughs> they can smoke me in one-handed mode. So that is all I have to share. I would say go to that um, support hymns dash inc slash support slash download center slash braille sense six or braille sense six mini uh, page. Download the latest firmware if you haven't already. Uh, take a look, take a good look at the, the, the change notes, uh, which is really, we've kind of pared it down here for today's webinar, um, but you'll see, you'll get to see all the bugs that have been fixed and um, all the additional functions as well. Anything else, Thomas? Yeah, I'm going to add um, two more things here real quick. Um, one is uh, for people who have the Braille Sense 6 Mini. Uh, yes. There is one change in there. If you go into your global options uh, by pressing space with the letter O and then press the letter U, the shortcut key U, um, there's going to be an option in there for USB. <laughs> and what we have done is uh, because USB uh, uh, hubs and drives uh, can take up energy. They can, they can actually drain your battery. Um, that is set to 2.0. Uh, by default out of the box. Um, you're going to want to change that to 3.0 if you're going to want to be using something like a visual monitor or something uh, of that, that nature. If you leave it set to 2.0, for the most part, it's going to be fine. You're just going to have a little bit slower data, data transfer speed um, for you know, normal size files, it's not going to be that big of an issue. If you've got a lot of stuff, you might want to have it set to 3.0. Um, and definitely, if you're going to want to be using a USB-C uh, display, you're going to want to set that to 3.0. So please note that it is, it is set to 2.0 by default um, for this firmware version. Uh, the other thing um, that I do want to point out is that if you're going to be using email, and you're going to be going from pop email to IMAP or OAuth. Please make a copy of the emails that you have. If you remember pop, what it does is it takes the email and it delivers it to that particular device. If you remove that pop email account, it removes your emails with it. So please feel free to contact him's technical support if you want to switch from pop to IMAP or OAuth and they will give you instructions on how you can back up those pop emails, how you can view them later. Um, but please do not delete your pop email account uh, and then switch over to IMAP or OAuth because those pop emails are no longer on that email server and you will not have any email. Very important. All right. And with that, uh, it is... 26 minutes after we had anticipated. So uh, I noticed that there's some uh, things left in the chat section, in the Q&A section. We're simply out of time. Uh, if you have any questions that are unresolved, feel free. If it's a technical support uh, question, feel free to reach out to HIMSS tech support. That is support at himsdashing.com. If you have a sales question, feel free to give us a call or send us an email, sales at himsdashing.com. We hope that you have found this interesting, entertaining, hopefully even informative. If you're going to be at the ACB or NFB conventions this year, please come and say hi. Uh, I know that I personally am happy uh, to be traveling again and getting out to some of these shows and, and getting able uh, to, to be in person with people. It's been a long time. It has been a long time. Well, with that, I think we're going to say goodbye. Earl, anything you want to add? No, I think that should about cover it. I appreciate you guys spending the time with us this afternoon. And just give, give us a holler if you have any questions. All right. Take care.